Does this look like a good place for a snow kitchen? Yeah. All right, come on over. We're here. Let's go set that stuff on the counter. The goal of any winter kitchen is to have plenty of hot food and hot drinks as well as melt water to supplement our hydration. All of this is to keep us warm, safe, and happy. Pictured here is a simple one-pot meal made with macaroni and cheese, some dried vegetables and smoked salmon that a scout did for his cooking merit badge trail meal requirement. Here are two different snow kitchens. On the left, we have a shallow kitchen and on the right we have one that's almost eight feet deep down into the snow. The goals of any snow kitchen should be to stay organized and to build them so they're out of the wind. For winter camping we use basically two kinds of stoves, one fueled by white gas and one fueled by isobutane. The white gas stove in the picture there is the one with the horizontal cylinder laying on its side. It has an integral pump. The isobutane stove is the one with the tank that sits underneath the burner there, sort of in the middle. Both have their pros and cons. The white gas stove takes little time to prime and heat the burner up so that it burns efficiently, whereas the isobutane stove, you can light it immediately. One of the drawbacks of the isobutane stove is you need to keep the cartridge relatively warm. So if you're not in the kitchen cooking with it, it should probably stay in your coat pocket and overnight it may need to reside in the bottom of your sleeping bag to keep it, uh, keep it somewhat warm. When it comes to pots and pans for winter camping, the key thing is, is to have a large enough pot that can melt water for the size of group that you're cooking for. So typically I like a two to four quart pot for a two to three person cooking group. Similarly with a white gas stove, two to three people on one stove works reasonably well. When we get down to the isobutane stoves, some of those work good for a couple of scouts. I recommend that if scouts using a jet boil that they just use that themselves and have at least one pot lid in your cook kit. That allows for a lot more fuel efficiency when melting water. Pictured here is a typical two to three person cook setup, and the bottom picture shows it packed up. As you'll see later on in the presentation, all of these stoves have a piece of uh, wood or plastic or something underneath them to keep them from melting in the snow. If you want to get fast, fancy, you can take a very thin piece of plywood and duct tape some foam on the bottom side, and that will provide a very adequate stove board to keep your stove from melting into the snow. The picture of the fuels here is pretty straightforward. Our white gas is a liquid. We store it in a fuel bottle or a fuel tank attached to the stove. The isobutane cartridge is handy in that you can take it off the stove um, to keep it warm in a jacket or in your sleeping bag. On the right side, we have that green bottle, and that's just standard propane. And I strongly discourage using propane or straight propane stoves in the winter. The propane tends to freeze the valves. And sometimes when a scout is changing a bottle, the valve is froze open and the residual amount of propane can spray out and freeze anything that's in its path, including human tissue. As a rule of thumb for a simple winter camping trip, I would recommend just doubling the amount of isobutane that you may use for a summer trip. And if you're using white gas, a simple calculation is a quarter to a third of a liter per person if you're melting water.
So this snow kitchen is humming along really nicely. We've got boiling water right here. And right here, after about 10 minutes or less, that includes melting some snow. Now take a look at this white gas stove here. Uh, it's got a pump. It's also got a windscreen. And these are two good features to have when we're uh, selecting white gas stoves. Now this ISO Pro isobutane stove doesn't use a windscreen. If we were to put a windscreen around it, um, we may overheat the tank and cause an unexpected explosion. But that won't happen with the white gas stove. The white gas stove likes to have a heat shield around it. So another great idea, um, and I like how stable this white gas stove setup is with the big uh, snowboard underneath it. But I'm big on using some sort of ladling device when I have lots of hot water in my winter kitchen uh, when I'm filling up someone's hot drink because we're going to be drinking a lot of hot drinks out here in the winter to stay hydrated because the cold air makes us lose more moisture than normal. So I'm a big fan of having a ladle cup or a ladle just so that no one gets burned and our nice pot of water doesn't get spilled. When scouts are planning their meals for a winter trip, encourage them to increase their calorie intake up to around 3,000. Typically your meals should be broken down so that they sort of fit this ratio of two parts protein to three parts fat to five parts carbs. One pot meals are really the way to go. Easy to make, easy to clean up. Soupy meals and snacks are recommended. We want to increase our water intake and by having lots of cup of soups to drink or maybe our macaroni and cheese is a little bit watery when we go to serve it. Um, all of these things are good for keeping us well hydrated. Some other considerations would be go ahead and reduce the packaging that you have to deal with when you're cooking in the winter because you're going to be wearing gloves. So take those wrappers off and throw the items just straight into a Ziploc bag. Um, Go ahead and cut up any cheese or meats that you may be bringing with you. Trying to cut up a frozen hunk of cheese with a pocket knife is a great way to get an injury. And lastly, uh, consider bringing perishables to the roadhead. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look in the food bag. With scouts, you can really have never have too much butter and cheese in the winter time. It goes great with almost every meal, and it's a great way to bump up the calories and add fats to the diet, which allow us to um, stay warm late at night, well after we've eaten dinner, because these don't start metabolizing until six hours or so after we've consumed them. So looking in the food bag, we'll take a look at what we brought out here with us to give you some ideas. Uh, we start out with uh, some compass soups, some instant oatmeal, some tea bags, hot chocolates, um, real common camping, backpacking foods. Got some bagels, butter and cheese to help boost our calories with whatever we're eating. Butter and cheese goes with pretty much everything in the wintertime. Got some dried fruit. Oh, look at that. We got some pre-made instant coffee with the milk already in it. If you take a look at all of this, pretty much with the exception of some of these little pre-packaged things, we've eliminated all the rest of our packaging and you know simplified things. We don't want trash blowing away. Part of LNT is plan and prepare and we've done this by eliminating all of our wrappers. If you look around here in this bag of macaroni that we're going to cook, the bouillon cubes are already in there. Um, we got some smoked salmon that we may add to the macaroni. I leave this in the package. And a little pro tip here, if you're transporting perishables to your winter outing, keep them in a cooler in the car and then pack them up once you get to the trailhead so they stay nice and cold.
great snack. We get to camp. We're gonna uh, eat a little something maybe before uh, we start digging or maybe partway through digging. Just little fried bagels with cheese. Big fan of these lightweight liner gloves that I bought at the commercial fishing supply store. Great for cooking in the kitchen, lightweight. They'll dry out quickly on my body and I can put another dry pair on if these get wet. Also great for grabbing some pots. Let's see what's happening with these bagels. Oh yeah, I think we're done. Staying hydrated in the wintertime is very important and it's often overlooked because it's not hot out. We may not be sweating as much and the desire to drink maybe just isn't quite as strong as it is on a hot summer day. It's recommended that we drink at least four to five liters of liquid every day when we're out on a winter trip. And this can be achieved through those soupy meals and hot drinks we consume in the kitchen as well as just drinking water out of our water bottle. Being well hydrated allows us to do that heavy physical work of building those snow shelters, digging snow kitchens, or snowshoeing off trail in the back country. Later in this video, we will talk to you about how to melt water successfully as part of this stay hydrated plan. It's a good idea to make sure your pot doesn't have any snow stuck to the bottom and you brush it off. And let's set it on the stove. Okay. So when I'm looking for melt water or snow for melt water, I don't want to take it off the counter because I may have spilled fuel on the counter. But if I come up here to my snow wall and dig some off of there, that's going to work great. Notice how quickly the snow melts when that water is really hot. And we always like to use lids so we are real conservative with our fuel. Alright, so I've got this pot of water here that I want to use in the morning to make more melt water and start my breakfast. So I'm going to go ahead and bury it for the night. It's right here on my counter. Start digging out a good sized hole. Get it down almost a foot. I'm uh, getting pretty good here. It doesn't need to go all the way to the center of the earth. Maybe down, get a good foot of insulation on top of it. So, and I like my pot that has the lid can get secured. Go ahead and stick it down in here, just like so. And then I'm just going to start. Filling it in. Notice I'm not packing the snow down. I want to be able to dig it out in the morning pretty easily um, without chipping my pot over or damaging my pot. So I think that's going to be good for tonight. All right, so part of the outdoor code is being clean in our outdoor manner. So before we put this kitchen to bed, we're gonna go ahead and capture all these escapees when we were serving food here. Now we finished the meal, then we're gonna have to get this kitchen sort of cleaned up so that it can uh, spend the night out here by itself and also sort of survive a snowstorm. So what we're going to do is we're going to get stuff packed up 
in an efficient way that we could find it even if it was buried in the morning. Just gonna set this over here and put the rest of this in the bag. Okay, so I gotta cover up my stove. I'm just gonna set this here so I know where my buried water is. I'm gonna put this in my pocket, and now we're ready for an overnight snowstorm. All right, looks like we pretty much erased this snow kitchen. Yep. Good leave no trace practice. my trail dinner for cooking merit badge and I'm boiling a pot of water to cook my vegetables in. So are we just having vegetables or is this part of something else? Well this is part of my mac and cheese vegetables the first step. So real quick for flavor and electrolytes I'm just going to throw in a bouillon cube while the vegetables are boiling. By the look of it my vegetables are done so I am going to stir my noodles in now. It's looking pretty good so far. Okay, and to make sure it doesn't overboil, I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit. And put the pot back. Okay, so now my noodles are in, i got to stir it so they don't just like sink to the bottom of the bird. Okay, so I've checked and, it and my noodles are drained, so now I'm going to drain my water, but I don't want to just, um, get rid of it because that because like I can use it for hot drinks and you don't want to get dehydrated when you're out in the cold here so I'm gonna drain it into these cups now I'm just gonna leave the rest of the water in there now that I've drained my water I'm going to need to get my cheese, butter, and salmon into my noodles as quick as possible so I can stir it in. Now I'm just going to stir this stuff in. Okay, so now that I've finished my trail dinner, I'm just gotta serve it up. And uh, that looks pretty good. Good dinner for All me. Right, that's enough for me, thank you. So, how is it mm. on a scale of 1 to 10 for camping food? I'm gonna say a solid 10. Here's the simple review of the key points of this video presentation. We want to eat enough. We want to drink enough. We want to clean up after ourselves and have a good time.